Grid stability is, is super important. Traditionally, our grid has been a fossil energy-based system, so it's, it's kind of rock solid. The fuel source is known. When the power generators come on, it generates very constant power, and that's expected and required of day-to-day -day life. So as the world transitions to more renewable-based energy, where that fuel input is flexible, meaning the wind speed changes, or sometimes it doesn't blow, or the clouds come over like today, and the, and the solar panels aren't working, that drives some instabilities into the grid. What we need to do is bring in additional technologies to allow that stability to be there. And the technologies primarily we're looking at here is energy storage. And what that allows us to do is when the energy is produced, whether it's stable or unstable, we can store some of it. And then when the instabilities come in, we can discharge energy back into the grid and therefore having a stable system just like we do today. Energy storage is critical for grid stability. When you look at the transition from fossil energy to renewable based energy, um, in the near term, as renewables come on, there's plenty of fossil base there to maintain that stability. But as the percentage of renewables gets higher and higher, there's gonna be natural instabilities just because of the variation of input. And that's where energy storage comes in. So you gotta bring in energy storage with those renewables. It allows you to have some energy in reserve. And when the renewables fluctuate, you can put that energy back in and maintain the stability that's we've come to expect. But energy storage um, can be thought of in different time frames, right? There's very short time scale issues, there's mid time scale issues, and then longer duration challenges. The very short time cycles like millisecond to second time frame can be handled with things like ultra capacitors or flywheels, or even handled in power electronics. And that could be an event like a big cloud comes through quickly. So you get a quick drop in voltage. That accommodation can be managed power electronic wise. And then there's the time where you've got a demand for energy at night when the sun shines during the day. So that would be kind of a midterm um, duration challenge that we would see. And in that case, we would use systems like this where they would get charged up during the day when the sun is really shining. And then we would discharge that energy at night when it's needed. And then there's the third category of very long duration. And this would be where you've got weeks of you know, bad weather or disruptions in the system where you'd need a different kind of technology that would allow you to store energy that could be discharged over days um, to solve those China challenges. We're standing here in our future energy test facility. This is roughly a six megawatt site where we've set this up to be grid scale testing. The containers you see behind me are full scale energy storage facility testing. We also have a, a row of inverters so we can test a variety of inverters. And then off in that direction, we have an array of solar panels and everything gets connected here. We can mix and match those components and do real world testing on cool new technology. These containers you see behind us here, uh, they're energy storage systems, the reservoir. They're exactly a 20 foot standard ISO container. They can be thought of in kind of three sections. There's a section on the far end, which is our control. So low voltage control, safety systems of that nature. On the other end here is kind of HVAC or thermal management of the system. And then the bulk of the container in the center is a space for lithium ion batteries. We can look at a variety of technologies, whether it's NMC or LFP. Um, and the systems are designed, like you see them, to be very easily installed. We can build them in a factory. We can do full factory testing. We can install batteries before they arrive to site which allows the simple installation. So it's a nice, smooth, easy package system that for energy storage markets. Another energy storage option out there is pumped hydro. And pumped hydro has been around for a very long time and it's, it's an excellent technology. And it's, it can be thought of a, a very long duration and very, very large energy storage. So you're talking potentially gigawatt hours of storage. The way it works literally is you have two different reservoirs that are different height. And when the energy is needed, the water is allowed to, to travel from the upper reservoir to the lower reservoir and generate energy. While it does that, once it's down and energy prices are, are cheap or needed, we can then pump that water back uphill. So it's an extremely stable, very well understood technology and, and is excellent for very long duration systems. If you look at the 25 challenges that people talk about, about this transformation from traditional grid to the future of grid, um, energy storage is absolutely a key into it. And, and I would go one step further and say hybrid technologies are also a key, which pull in energy storage. So putting different technologies together the simplest way to think about it is putting solar power with batteries, right? It's a natural coupling of the two. It allows you to manage that variability through the battery. You can do that with wind and solar. You can do it with wind, battery, and solar. You can even do it with gas turbines and batteries. So it allows you to, to put multiple assets together to really give you that robust system. And as we make that transition from fossils all the way to renewables, these things are going to be key to making that happen.